Welcome once again to the Tin Dog Podcast. If you feel the need to contact me, please feel free to do so. Tin-dog, that's T-I-N-D-O-G, at hotmail.co.uk. Right, this week, the Lazarus Experiment. And of course, indeed, the one that I was really looking forward to. Anyone who's a regular listener to this show will be aware of how much I rate Mark Gatiss. And, like the person on the BBC commentary, I was more than surprised that Mark Gatiss had agreed to be in Doctor Who, because I was kind of thought, well, I thought he was holding out to play the Doctor. But then again, lots of other people thought that as well. So is there something up? Well, on the commentary, Russell rather interestingly says that in Mark Gatiss you've got someone who completely understands Doctor Who. Someone who sees the character for exactly what he is, knows the history of the series, but also knows where it's going. Now to me, that sounded very much like the sort of speech that Tony Blair should be making about Gordon Brown. This is the man who I've got faith in to be my replacement. Now look at it from Mark's point of view. You know, he's always wanted Doctor Who as a plaything. He's always wanted to play the Doctor. Russell doesn't really want to go on forever in the role. He does want to continue writing. He's got Torchwood to play with, of course, as well. So he needs a successor, someone he knows. Now, if you're offered the part of Doctor eventually, hang on a couple of years and you can play the Doctor. Or, do you want to play in my sand pit and take over and control the series completely? Now, I know Mark's stories haven't been the most successful. Well, no, not they have been successful. They haven't been the most popular of yeah, of lately. I mean, let's face it, The Wire wasn't exactly the most fabulous or inspired of baddies. But his stories are consistently good. And I think he's got some complete talent. So perhaps Russell has got him in mind. But anyway, enough about that. Let's discuss the episode And it was good. It was a bit of a surprise. I mean, let's face it, it's... A lot of people have seen this series episode as the sort of, you know, long game. The episode that's a bit of a filler. We are halfway through the season, after all. But it was a surprisingly good episode. The monster, admittedly, I don't know. Or saying that it was an excuse that it was using junk DNA was fine, but... I don't know. I would like to have seen it evolve in stages as per the original script. But hey, I'm just being picky. It was very well done. I did feel like they killed it once, realised they had five minutes left of the episode and needed to kill it again, but that's just me being picky. If anything, this story actually felt like one of the classic series episodes. There was a monster, there was mad scientists, there was even reversing the polarity of the neutron flow for all of us Pertwee fans out there, which is never going to go amiss. And like the Doctor says, it's been a long time since he's done that, and he is out of practice and needs to do it some more. I did hear once that whenever somebody comes onto the series and starts writing for the new Doctor, they always make the same mistake. They always write for John Pertwee. I'm not sure if that's true or not, or whether that's just one of those stories you hear, but it is interesting to note that although everybody seems to have grown up with Tom, the real Doctor for a lot of people is John. Anyway, episode-wise, you got to see Martha's family. Now, there's one thing that lots of people haven't quite picked up on, although I just probably haven't come across it yet. Mark Gatiss, when he's old man, leans over to... Um, Martha's sister, and goes, Nice perfume, what's that? Ah, it's soap. And in many respects, this episode did indeed smell of soap. Soap opera. It stank of soap opera, or potential soap opera. It had the family, it had, well, the brother, the sister. The father wasn't in it, thank God, but you just know he's turning up again. And of course, the mother. Ah, there was one, of course, extra character. 
in the script, the extra character is known as, and here's a bit of a spoiler for some people, Mysterious Man. Yes, my levels of, levels of sarcasm are fairly notable. Mysterious Man, a character who turns up and goes, Oh, by the way, Mr. Saxon, that's Mr. Saxon, Mr. Saxon, uh, did we mention it three times? Was that enough for everyone? Okay, has something to tell you about the Doctor. Yeah, you're kind of going, we've got Mr. Saxon. I'm glad they're not laying it on half as thick as they did for Torchwood. But then again, they haven't got a spin-off series to plug. A great performance in this episode, with the exception, of course, of Mark, which was fantastic. Let's face it, when he was playing himself, it was great. But when he, when the mill was playing Lazarus, well... Mark's performance was very good. A very good performance in this episode, and one that a lot of people have skipped over, was Thelma Barlow. Yes, I know she was down as Mavis in Coronation Street, but to be honest, part of me wanted her to survive, and her to be the one that killed Lazarus. In a kind of a lover's, well, if you won't love me, I will kill you kind of a way, rather than the classic King Kong uh, falling from a high thing death which is what we seem to be given. There was also not enough reference to regeneration and longevity. This episode seemed to be designed for that. And you really, well, all right, I felt like I needed more more mentions of, of the doc. You know, the, the chat they were having in the church about his childhood and growing old and seeing things and being old before your time. I think could have gone a tiny bit further, and to be honest, I suspect it did in the original script, towards the Doctor seeing how old and how tired he is, just as a nice run-up to human nature, if anything else. Anyway, I enjoyed it. It was a very, very good episode. Next week, however, there is the hiatus. The hiatus of one week. God, there was a time when we could only say that one week. <laughs> right. Moving on. It'll give us enough time to regroup recapture, and watch the last moment of the coming next episode, because that was the rest of the season, where we got to see Mr. Saxon. We got to see lots of very, very nice things. Soon we have 42, which is an inverse of 24, because obviously the Doctor has 42 minutes, the length of an episode, to save the planet, the universe, the moon, or whatever he gets to decide. I don't really know much about that episode because, as always, I kind of stay well clear of spoilers. I will, of course, be sitting down with a pencil and working out exactly what Harold Saxon is an anagram of. Hmm. No. I'll get back to you on that one. Anyway, a short one this week. See you in two weeks' time when I'll be reviewing another episode. Be seeing you. Oh, my God.